Hi, I'm Dr. Ashford, and today we're going to be talking about the whole problem, menopause, perimenopause, what those words mean, uh, how they may relate to you, what are the age groups, how to know whether these things uh, are occurring in your life. We'll get to the actual word, which uh, menopause, perimenopause, which may be a little bit misleading, but I want to start off by saying when women are in their late 30s and certainly any time in their 40s and sometimes even early 50s, uh, they can have symptoms that they are thinking are menopause, perimenopause, and it, the symptoms fall into three general categories. Uh, number one, uh, menstrual irregularities. Number two, uh, enhanced premenstrual symptoms, primarily the headache and the mood, and the mood falls into the categories of anxiety, irritable, anger, depressed, emotional, agitated. Again, these are symptoms that maybe a woman has had uh, since teenage days or even in her 20s, 30s, but there it is just getting worse. And then, of course, the headaches, uh, frequently migraines, uh, frequently uh, around the time of the period, as well as some of the other premenstrual complaints, uh, the bloating, the fatigue, uh, acne, food cravings, and the rest of it. So number one, again, menstrual irregularities. Number two, uh, the enhanced uh, premenstrual type symptoms. And number three, symptoms that are related to declining output from her ovaries. So this is an entirely separate thing. About age 40, women do start having some very, very gradual decline in the output from the ovaries, and this decline continues until they're 60, or maybe 65, or maybe 70, with the point being it is a long period of time from here to not very much. Some will drop suddenly and trail off, others much later, either case or any case, at some point, uh, everyone drops and goes through a threshold. Most women will have some complaints of declining output from the ovaries with the most common two things, hot flash, night sweat thing, but they can also have mood, depressed, can't think, can't remember, can't come up with a word or name or number, brain fog, cloudy thinking, can't sleep or go to sleep, can't go back to sleep, hair, skin, vaginal, vaginal dryness, sexual, meaning mainly libido, fatigue, weight gain. Honestly, 25 different complaints. No one has all 25 things, but one thing or two things, uh, the most common, the hot flash night sweats thing. So if a hypothetical woman were to say, yeah, so like I'm in this age group and a few months ago, six months ago, I was at work and uh, unpleasant hot sensation quickly subsided, woke up at night, sweaty, what's all this? Pretty good bet she's dropped through that threshold. Therefore, it's a pretty good bet were you to give her the bioidentical supplement and restore the level uh, that she had previously had with regard to output from the ovaries, it's a pretty good bet that all those symptoms would go away. And if at the same time she says, yeah, that, but then my mood and my memory and coming up with names, words, numbers, and this brain fog thing, uh, sleep, go to sleep, can't go back to sleep, vaginal dryness, sexual fatigue, waking, yeah, all happened about the same time. It's a pretty good bet. It's all related, and if you were to restore, it will all go away. Uh, not always. I mean, men have insomnia. You can't blame everything on this, but a lot of it you can. So just to recap, we're looking at three things. One, the menstrual irregularity thing, heavy or irregular periods, the enhanced premenstrual complaints, which you've had years and years, but now it's getting worse, particularly the fluid retention bloating, the mood, anxiety, irritable, anger, depressed, emotional, agitated, the headaches, frequently migraines, as well as some of the other complaints, and finally, the, the symptoms of declining out. But all of these uh, relate uh, or referred to as menopause, perimenopause, which is a little bit misleading because it's really in two different categories. The menstrual irregularities and the enhanced premenstrual complaints all relate to the lining of the uterus, the Declining output uh, from the ovaries, of course, relates to that. So these two categories are related to each other, of course, in an obvious way. And uh, some of the symptoms uh, that are associated with the enhanced premenstrual complaints can somewhat mimic the declining output from the ovaries. But they're separate things and need to be thought of separately. So if a woman says, no, you know, primarily what's bothering me is these crazy periods, they've gotten irregular, and I'm having this enhanced version 
of the premenstrual symptoms. This, these two categories relate exclusively to the lining of the uterus. So think of the uterus, the womb, is the size of a lemon, a large lemon, small orange, and it has an internal space. And that space is lined by some hormonally active skin, specialized skin, which we call endometrium. And that is the part that thickens and sheds, and thickens and sheds, and goes through a cycle we all know about. And as it degrades and gets ready to shed, it releases a vasoactive neuropeptide into the bloodstream, and that is what triggers all of the famous symptoms. The fluid retention, bloating, uh, the headaches, the mood, anxiety, irritable, anger, depressed, emotional, agitated, those six categories. It will also trigger this profound fatigue, especially leading up to the period and during the first part, as well as the pain, as well as the acne, as well as the intestinal problems, and sometimes even the food craving, chocolate, salt, sugar, most commonly chocolate. So all of these are the enhanced premenstrual symptoms. So that is not related directly to the ovaries. It correlates with the ovarian cycle, that's true, but it relates to the lining of the uterus. So the reason this is important, if childbearing is complete, one solution would be to remove, get rid of the endometrium, that's called endometrial ablation, ablation get rid of. If a woman doesn't have an endometrium, she's not gonna have any bleeding. I mean, that's the part that bleeds, uh, her bleeding is only coming from there. It doesn't come from the body of the uterus. It does not come from the ovaries or the tubes or even the vaginal tissues. It only exclusively 100% comes from the endometrium. And if a woman doesn't have an endometrium, she's not going to have bleeding, categorical statement. So if she says, yeah, the problem is this irregular bleeding and it very heavy bleeding. Endometrial ablation is a simple day surgery. Come in, do it, go home. Uh, when we do it, uh, we've done 6,000, we don't cut anything, there are no stitches, there's nothing structural, pretty much go back to work uh, the next day. But in addition to getting rid of the bleeding, she's not gonna have degrading of the endometrium, which releases the vasoactive neuropeptide, so she won't have the other symptoms that go along with that premenstrual time frame. She won't have specifically the migraine headaches and she won't have the mood. The mood falls into those words I just mentioned, anxiety, irritable, anger, depressed, emotional, agitated, and some subset. Sometimes people say, I have all of it. And some people say, well, no, it's, it's mainly the depression or it's mainly the anger or just things really, really get on my nerves. Whatever it is, if you get rid of the endometrium, mood-wise, her life will feel like the week after the period 365 days a year. So again, the perimenopausal thing falls into these three categories. There is the heavy irregular bleeding, there are the enhanced premenstrual symptoms, and finally, there is the complaints uh, associated with declining output from the ovaries. So frequently, the way we will approach this, just depending on the patient and customized to her, if she says, look, it's all of it. I don't like any of it. We will do the endometrial ablation first. It's simple, it's safe, it's easy. Come in, do it, go home, have a nice day, cook supper if that's what you care to do, and go to work the next day. So if after the endometrial ablation, a procedure, a woman, say hypothetical woman in her 40, 40s says, yeah, I feel like a new woman. I'm perfect. We're done. If she says, look, it's nice not having periods. And yes, a lot of these symptoms I was having with the, the mood and the bloating and the headache, all of that's gone away. But boy, I, I'm still having some hot flashes and some of the other complaints, the cognitive and brain fog. Then uh, there may be in addition a need to give her the supplement from uh, the declining output, uh, to match the declining output from the ovaries. So we would give uh, the appropriate supplement tending to fall into the bioidentical version of the testosterone, estrogen, and progesterone, all of which uh, come from the ovaries. So estrogen tends to affect of course, the hot flash, night sweat, everyone knows this. And then also the cognitive, that will affect uh, the brain fog, uh, coming up with words, names, numbers. When women say, yeah, it's, that kind of describes it, brain fog. This is not a brain problem. This is a GYN problem and it needs to be treated as such and restore clarity. It will also help with mood, feeling like control and not excessive anxiety, hair, skin, uh, vaginal dryness, these are some of the things the estrogen replacement will do. The bioidentical version, of course, uh, given in the right way, 
and the right dose, uh, correctly administered bioidentical hormone therapy, HRT, is 100% safe. It does not cause cancer. In fact, women will live longer and have lower rates of cancer. So uh, if you've been told that or, or saying, yeah, you know, I take it, I feel like that's a problem, uh, I think you need to get a second of opinion. A second opinion. Uh, this is what we do. And if you're having any of these symptoms in any of these categories, the problem periods, uh, the enhanced premenstrual complaints, or the complaints associated with declining output from the ovaries, I would recommend talking to some doctor or healthcare provider that specializes in this. One of the problems is women will go to their regular OBGYN doctor. Most uh, OBGYN medical practices uh, focus on the obstetrical side, which is of course wonderful. But women say, yeah, but it's great, but that's not what I'm doing right now. And so they wind up uh, getting shunted off to uh, sometimes nurse practitioner or PA who just is scheduled for uh, four or five uh, patients per hour. There's not enough time to really go through what needs to be talked about and, and customize a plan. So if you're having problems like this, uh, go to our website. Uh, you could schedule a televisit. We see people from all over the country, but this is our passion. This is what we do. We would love to see you and talk to you about it and get you back in the game and feeling 100% uh, 365 days a year. Thanks for watching.